You've probably heard of the Black Death, one of the most fatal pandemics in human history. Well, you might not know that the disease that caused it, also called the plague, is still around today, including in the United States, Madagascar, and Peru. And while cases in people in the U.S. might be rare, plague outbreaks in animals, especially the rare black-footed ferrets, are devastating. So devastating, in fact, that plague is the top contender for biggest threat in the category of black-footed ferret conservation. The beautiful, sleek, black-footed ferret was once thought to be extinct, until biologists found a single population in Wyoming in 1981. Since then, thanks to captive breeding and reintroduction, numbers have climbed, but they're still endangered and at major risk of extinction from the plague. But how do you find, prevent, or even treat hundreds of animals hiding in burrows across thousands of acres in the plains of Western North America? The answer might come down to peanut butter and paintball guns. Now, before we dive in, just a quick note about plague. The disease is caused by the bacterium Yersinia pestis, and in wild animals is mostly spread by fleas or by eating infected animals. And when we're talking about plague in wild animals, you might hear biologists calling it sylvotic plague. It's still the same disease. Sylvotic just means of the woods and refers specifically to plague in rural wildlife as opposed to in humans. And anywhere plague occurs in animals, if there is a vector or an organism that can carry and transmit the disease from one animal to another, it can also be passed on to humans. Although there is currently no approved vaccine for people in the U.S., there are ways to protect black-footed ferrets. Ferrets that are bred in captivity are all injected with a vaccine that uses proteins or antigens from the Ypestis bacterium. That's great at bolstering their immune system against the disease, but there's a problem. These ferrets aren't the only animal at major risk from plague. Black-footed ferrets rely almost entirely on prairie dogs for their food and use prairie dark burrows for their shelter. So if those animals are wiped out, so are the ferrets. And when prairie dogs become infected, up to 99% of the population can be lost in a single bout. So the conservation effort for black-footed ferrets is as much about vaccinating and protecting prairie dogs that live in the ferrets' habitat as it is about the ferrets themselves. And it's not just about keeping the prairie dogs alive, but also keeping them disease-free so they don't pass on the bacteria when they're eaten. In 2004, a team of scientists led by epidemiologist Tony Rock developed one of the first edible vaccines against sylvatic plague from a modified raccoon pox virus. But it only protected prairie dogs who had been infected with plague in about 55% of cases. Later in 2010, Rock and colleagues tweaked the vaccine slightly to include another gene from the virus. This time, 94% of the vaccinated animals survived. Now you might be wondering, how do you get prairie dogs interested in chowing down on plague vaccines? Well, Rock and her team wondered that too. So they tried a bunch of different flavors that might entice the little creatures. Some of the first baits, including the ones used in the 2004 and 2010 studies, were made of sweet potato because prairie dogs regularly ate vegetables as part of their diet in captivity. But when it came to deciding the final bait flavor, the procedure was pretty straightforward. The team put out baits in the lab that had been flavored with either peanut butter, sweet potato, blueberry, or not flavored at all. Researchers then let the prairie dogs loose on them and watched to see which baits were gobbled up the fastest. And peanut butter was the go-to, which Rock said is unsurprising since lots of animals, including rodents, love peanut butter. Now, while they might taste appetizing, these baits don't exactly look appealing. They have to be dyed blue so that they can be easily spotted out in the wild. And once everything is mixed together, the baits are frozen to keep the vaccine itself in working order. So biologists had their vaccine and they had a way to feed it to the animals but now they needed a way to actually get the bait to the animals. Now, the simplest way, of course, would be to just walk around spreading bait out like lawn seed. But they needed to drop 50 baits per acre and spread them out evenly in a 9 by 9 meter grid over thousands of acres. Hand drops just weren't going to cut it. So in 2016, the World Wildlife Fund, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, engineering company Support XXL, and drone manufacturer Model Avionics teamed up to come up with a more high-tech approach. They developed and then tested three different robotic vaccines 
seen bait delivery systems. One was a drone that would drop baits one by one, the second was an ATV that again dropped single baits, and the third was an ATV that could drop three pellets at a time. That same year, the team tested their designs on 1,200 acres of land in UL Bend National Wildlife Refuge in Montana. Although the ATVs and drones were much more efficient and less pricey than hand doling the baits out, the lumpy baits sometimes jammed up the chute as they thawed. After a few engineering tweaks, the team came up with their ultimate design, a triple shooter that could be mounted on either an ATV or a drone. Imagine basically like a paintball gun crossed with a gumball machine. Using a trigger that is synced to a GPS, the device pops one pellet out underneath it, while at the same time shooting a bait nine meters out on either side. And you can even double up on the dispensers and have one person drive an ATV and another fly the drone for even more efficient pellet shooting power. In 2017, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service used the two dispensers to distribute vaccine baits across 7,000 acres in prairie dog habitats in Montana, Colorado, and South Dakota. Now, the team says there are still improvements they want to make. The device does still sometimes get jammed, for example, but overall, it's a pretty good system. Unfortunately, though, oral vaccine baits are not as effective as scientists would like. The vaccine works well in the lab, but in the wild, it's a different story. A field trial by Mark Matchett and colleagues in 2021 concluded that the number of vaccinated prairie dogs surviving until the next year wouldn't be enough to sustain a black-footed ferret population. They think the low success rate comes down to timing. See, autumn is the best time to distribute the bait, since food quality slowly drops and prairie dogs would be motivated to snack on some bait on the side. But even though 99% of the prairie dogs the scientists sampled had eaten at least one bait, come spring, a whole lot of prairie dog pups are born, meaning around half of the population ends up not being vaccinated. Which means, as cool as the paintball shooting peanut butter vaccine balls are, they are just one part of a conservation plan to control plague. Capture and release, as well as using insecticides to kill the fleas that spread plague, are also very important. Plague will likely always be there, but by combining research and technology, maybe it doesn't have to be so much of a, you know, a plague. Thank you.